Hello game makers, this is Game Maker Rob and in this episode we finally get around to heights as well as including decorations and some other little neat tricks as well. So let's get started. Okay, so we have our 2D grids. Uh, we have 100 cells in the grid and in every cell we have a list. That list is going to store the information for us. Uh, we're now going to get on with the height. Um, a couple of things we need to add for this in the create event we have two new variables we have current height uh, when we click on a cell we're going to be setting the height to whatever current height equals so if current height height equals three then that cell the height for that cell will also equal three uh, max height is just a limiter for current height so we're going to have 12 different levels of height and in the step event, we have a brand new region called change the height. Uh, if we press up, we want to increase the height. If we press down, we want to decrease the height. And then this region has been modified. All we've done, we've just added this line in. So we want to set the height of this cell in the list to current height. And then in the draw event, we've modified the draw cell region. All, all I've done is I have commented out these two lines. Uh, we've added this line, so we know the height for the current cell. And then we, we're going to use this for loop. <clears throat> what this for loop does is for every, for however high the tile is, or the cell is, it's going to draw a tile. So if uh, the cell is has a height of three, then it's going to have four tiles. It's going to start from zero, and then it's going to draw a one at uh, one, draw another one at two, and then draw a fourth one at three. So we have four tiles. Um, this line here is the same as this one, but we're now adding this bit here because uh, I don't know if if you've noticed, but uh, the higher up the tile is, um, the, basically it's just further up on the screen as well. So this calculation will take account of that. Um, and then this uh, line is the same as this one. I just wanted to make it a bit more clearer as to what was going on. So if we run the game, we should be able to change the height for some of these tiles now so let's go to press the up arrow a few times we start clicking and we can change the height just press down and it can change the height again just press down again there you go so we have height on the tiles a couple of issues at the moment uh, for one uh, there's no visual indicator for how high uh, the mount the actual current height is we're going to use the mouse cursor for that uh, and also say for example we put something high at the very top here if you look at the very top this of the uh, tile it's kind of indistinct indistinguishable from any of the tiles around it that's because uh, the greens on every height are all the same color so uh, we are going to tackle both those problems now okay so uh, i've already put the code in that we need uh, it should be pretty straightforward first of all we are going to use game makers function called make color rgb we're going to give it a random value for red green and blue uh, which is going to be between 150 and whatever draw height times nine is so basically uh, the lower the tile the darker it's going to be that's the effect that we should be going for um, also, we need to use draw sprite ext instead of just draw sprite, and we're gonna draw the sprite same uh, floor index, same draw draw x, same draw y. Uh, x scale, y scale is still one. Rotation zero, uh, and this is where we're gonna use our uh, our new color that we've made called col and uh, alpha of one. So. These three lines are going to 
shade our tiles for us. Uh, this was the line we had before. And then in the cursor, uh, all we've done is we have added a for loop here, uh, very similar to this one here. Uh, we have updated the draw Y to account for the height. And then this line is the same as before. So we've just added in the for loop really and the draw Y, that's the main thing. So if we run the game again, we should have taken care of those two problems. Oops, I had my old object in there still. Let's try again. Okay, so if I press up, you can see we've got a better indication of where the height is gonna be. And if we start painting around, let's make like a staggered slope. There we go. You can see uh, the colors a lot, a lot better now. If I make this tile really high, there's a much better contrast between this one and this one over here. So uh, you can sync with it with that as much as you want. Um, you might want to make the contrast higher. Uh, the reason when I first did this, I had uh, I didn't have a starting value of 150, um, so the very lowest height was very dark. I didn't think that was a good effect, so that's why I started with that value there. But uh, like I said, you can just tinker with that as much as you want. Okay, so there's a couple more things we're going to add. We're going to add the ability to place decorations. We're going to add a blueprint when we're moving the mouse around so we can see what's going on. Uh, and we're also going to change the bottom middle sprite so we can see what sprite we're going to be adding as well. So uh, first thing we're going to do as usual is in the create event, uh, we want to set up this new region called setup sprite array. We just want to sell, uh, we just want to, sorry, store uh, the floor sprites and decoration sprites inside the array just to make it easier to switch between them. It's going to save us some uh, some spaghetti code otherwise. And then in extra variables, we have these two new lines. Current parts is either going to equal floor index or decoration index. Uh, this is going to uh, basically let's current sprite know which sprite to use. So current parts going to equal zero or one. So it's going to either equal this entry or this entry. And then current sprite is going to be either SPR ISO floor or SPR ISO decoration. Then uh, this one here, so uh, this has been updated to allow us to switch between the floor and decoration. Um, we're gonna check to see if we're holding down shift. If we're not, then we're just gonna update uh, new, in new index as before. Uh, we want to use current sprite rather than SBR ISO floor, just to make sure uh, we take into account the difference in images for the sprites. So make sure you change this as well. Uh, otherwise, if we are holding down shift and we press right, then we want to change from floor to decoration or vice versa. Uh, so current sprites now going to be uh, the other sprite than it was before. We also want to reset new index to make sure that we're not trying to uh, use an index of a sprite that doesn't have that many images. That's why we're resetting it. And then we do the same with the left key. If we're not holding down shift, then change new index as normal, making sure we use current sprite rather than SPR ISO floor. Change tile part, same as above really. So once you've got that down, we're going to modify paint the map. Uh, pretty simple. This is what we had before. Uh, previously, we only had to worry about floor index, uh, but now it could be floor or decoration. So we're going to use our vari variable called current part. Then 
in the draw event. In draw cell, we now want to draw the decoration. That's what this bit's gonna do inside our north new for loop. We only want to draw the decoration on the very top height of the tile of the cell. That's what this check is going to do. Grab the sprite of decorations, grab the index from the cell for decorations, and then draw it. We're still going to be using the call variable, the same one as here. So it gets the same shading as the floor. Then uh, we want to draw a blueprint for the decoration just so we can see what we're going to be placing before we do it. That'll save us some time making maps. Uh, if current part is equal to decoration, grab the sprite and then draw it. But we're going to draw it with a yellow shading to make it look more like a blueprint. So it's more obvious to us. So once you've got that, then we're going to go into draw GUI. And so all, we, all we're doing is uh, we're replacing our 2D sprite with the relevant isometric one. So comment this out, add this line. It's going to equal either the floor or decoration sprite. We're going to grab the relevant image uh, and that's it really. <clears throat> I'm going to draw it in the bottom middle. So if we run the game, we should have a half decent editor. There's plenty of room for customization so draw some height change it to snow some snow up there uh, get some water down here and then let's add some walls There we go, very simple editor, uh, but it's uh, a lot easier to edit stuff as well. Uh, one thing is, say for example, we want to change the height of something towards the back. So let's uh, lower it down. So now we can't really easily edit the back. So we're gonna add one more thing so we can change the level that we're looking at. Okay, so uh, let's sort that problem out now. If we go back into OBJ editor, uh, inside extra variables, we have one new one called display all heights. The way this is going to work is uh, if it's true, then we're going to draw everything as normal. If it's false, then we're only going to draw cells up to whatever current height equals, which will allow us to uh, find and edit tiles that are behind others and are also lower than them it's the best solution that i've found to the problem so far so once you've added this line then let's go into the step event we've got one new region called toggle display all heights if you press tab then it's just going to be the opposite of itself so it's either going to be true or false and then in the draw event, so in draws in draw cell, uh, in in our for loop, we have encompassed this code here into a new if statement. All we're checking is if display all heights is false, then we only want to draw the cell up to current height. So that's why this check is here. If draw height is seven and current height is 6, then this isn't going to run. Either this or if display all heights is true, then we'll draw this code again. So that's how we're going to limit it. So once you have that code down, let's run the game again. And I'm going to put 
some water over here but then I'm going to increase the size height sorry and I'm going to make some grass over here and now we can't really edit the water unless uh, we press tab and then we press down and now we can so the more that I increase current height the more levels I can see if I press tab I can see all of them like that so it's just a useful little tool so we can get behind stuff if we need to uh, and that's it that's going to be the end of this episode next episode we are going to save and load the maps uh, while we're editing them as well as saving them for the game um, and loading them for the game as well uh, that's going to be covered in the next episode so uh, thank you for watching and i will catch you next time bye for now <laughs>